this CEO's company is kind of a crazy one, since this is not your typical brand or CEO. Check out this news aired talking about him. All visionaries who came before him, the owner of bikinis, is not content to rest on those laurels. So he bought a town in Texas and renamed it Bikinis. Quite a brutal firing. CEO Harlan Ken is going undercover as Dan Johnson, and he is ready to try and understand his business better. My coworkers will be told that I'm a contestant on a reality TV show called Second Chances, where I'm given a second chance at starting a new line of work. Ken's first job is at their South Deerfield branch. Just check out how cool this is. This is the most important store in terms of setting the tone for the Yankee Candle brand. Kent already has an idea of what he wants to see. Is there a real focus on customer service? Are people having fun and are they feeling good? Because when people are feeling good, then they buy stuff. Ken is paired up with Blaze, one of the young sales associates. Are you trying with you today? Yes. Cool. We're going to do a few different things. We're going to do uh, wax hands, which is just make a cast in your hand out of wax. It's definitely popular. Right off the bat, Blaze doesn't seem too thrilled to be working here, and Kent is slowly catching on to the fact. Guess comes up, you have the chart. Yep. And the instructions to make a rainbow. Over here, the biggest pain is just, you know, kids are going to get messy. The first customer approaches, and of course, it's a kid. Blaze and Ken handle the customer well while making the kid feel comfortable. Done this before? Yeah. You have? Professional? Here? Very nice. Okay. Oh, is that a Christmas tree? Oh, that's so pretty. Very nice. Kent is happy with that interaction, but this is when Blaze turns around and says that he believes otherwise. Okay. Is that it? Great. Thank you. Very Thank much. you. Have a great day. These people are incredibly nice. They're not all going to be like that. Blaze even goes as far as reenacting what he thinks happens when kids are involved in such an activity. Blaze is on fire. He's so riled up by this one little thing that you won't believe what he says next. Well, no, no, you, you definitely just dropped that in there. Cause here. And there has been instances where you're gonna wanna strain and slap the kid. He said, what? Blaze then reveals to Kent that he is indeed a hot-headed person and isn't the most patient either. <laughs> <laughs> completely honest with you, I have the worst temper. Kent is concerned for Blaze since he has such awful thoughts. As much as you hate whoever you're working with. He's angry about some things. I'm, I'm not sure what exactly it is that's making him angry, but that's not great for all the rest of the team. Blaze doesn't stop there. He continues to say things like, They'll dip it a million times, leave you a mess like this. As bad as this comes across, sometimes I feel like punching an eight-year-old. Kent is like a child and enjoys everything happening at the place, but Blaze isn't too thrilled to be there. Because it comes out of color. It's the Hulk. It's Absolutely. <laughs> so cool. It's a weird situation to throw yourself into, throwing people's hands in. At the time of a reveal, Blaze has only come to realize that he's jeopardized his job. Blaze, imagine meeting you here. So I was curious to catch up with you, as you can imagine. Kent then has a talk with Blaze before deciding not to fire him despite all that. Imagine Blaze using inappropriate language, especially in a place where you're trying to create a great atmosphere. That's just uh, the wrong time. Good boss, bad employee. Blaze is lucky to have gotten that second chance. The next boss on this list is one of the first to travel all the way to Mexico undercover. Being the first boss to travel to foreign soil. I get you wet? I'm a little wet. Brown. This isn't the first rodeo for Stephen J. Klubik since he had previously done an undercover episode, and that was a big fail. Very worrying, since if this is the way the staff talks to the guests, it's going to affect the entire business. I don't tell guests all, all the time. You're talking to me, you're telling me. Right, and I, I just, and it I can't do anything about it, so. Uh, exactly. Um, and there's all these items that we're not discounted to because they didn't present the card ahead of time. Klubik, Klubik has quite the work cut out for him. Next, here we have the CEO of the billion dollar e-commerce giant, Michael Rubin. It's time to go back to the escalations. I'm gonna uh, sit you down here with Danielle and Gary. Rubin says that he needs all the help in the world, and this is what she said. Act like you've been here 10 years and you're good to go. I'll be more confident. Because they'll sense, they'll sense fear. Our job is to be the punching bag and, and take the abuse. Okay. You ready to do this? I am. All right, let's do it. Hit, hit the auto in. Yep. There you go, go for it. Ruben starts immediately, and this is what the task was. I have a customer on the line. She ordered a Garvin the day after Thanksgiving, and she made $99.99 for it. It got canceled. According to Danielle, this was not the customer's fault, but then he finds something wrong. 
we can sell that to you for $99.99. The problem is just the way our systems work. We need to put it through at the price that's on the website today. No, I'm not waiting on a credit to be issued. The customer wasn't happy with that response, but Danielle was smiling as he was having a hard time. Understood, Elizabeth. I promise you I'm here to help you and I want to help you and your business is really important to us. So just... credit. You can do what you said. It's almost like Danielle wants to burst out laughing, but what she says next will shock you. Yes. We, we, we definitely cousin. see. Yes, I see the email. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I absolutely, see, I absolutely see the email. Can you hold on one second, please? What's even more surprising is what she says next about the customer. At this point, she's not going to accept an after the fact credit. So you have to sound confident at this point and put her in her place. You but, can, but, uh, yes, she's had a bad experience. But she doesn't want to make her happy. She then proceeds to show the rookie how it's done. You're not letting me talk. You're not letting me talk, so I can't help you, Elizabeth. I'm sorry that you're having a hard time. I'm honoring what the email. She then proves why people like her should not work in this service. No coupon code was ever sent to me. May I speak now? The whole thing ma'am, is, where is ma'am? Ruben couldn't believe that Danielle just rudely called the customer by saying her name so informally. There wasn't a lot that Danielle was doing right. She had an attitude with customers. And then I said we would do an after the fact credit. Would you like me to repeat it? Ruben also said that she didn't want to make the customer happy, as this next video will just prove it to you. Please give me corporate number. Not a problem. Be happy to assist you. Okay, corporate's number is 1 800. It is infuriating for a boss to see his employee hang up on a customer. Here, absolutely no passion towards their jobs. And those are the ones that need to be sacked. And you didn't have. Oh my God. Ugh. Thank you very much. My mom's going to freak out. <laughs> Thank you so much. I don't know what to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you ready to experience a roller coaster of emotions where one esteemed CEO goes undercover in his very own company? The CEO of Belfour, the world's largest disaster restoration company, poses as an unemployed insurance salesman looking for a new line of work. Guys, you have to see this unforgettable episode in its entirety because it will leave a lasting imprint on your senses. Meet Sheldon Yellen the CEO of Belfour. It's unlikely you don't know Belfour, world's largest disaster restoration company. So what happened is Tom Kelly, the undercover identity of Sheldon, reached Norfolk, Virginia to clean and repair homes where he met Joe, an employee who was competent, polite, hardworking, and had a ton of charisma. What more could you want from an employee, right? Hello. Hi, Joe. Hey. Hi, Tom Kelly. How hey, are Tom. You? All right, okay. Tom got to know Joe as their project progressed, and he was already taken aback by his demeanor and aura. Tom became breathless as they began the dissembling work, because who does things like that from behind the CEO's desk, huh? I've done quite a few things. What did you do before this? General contractor in the state of Virginia. I worked for a fella for three years, and then I said, well, you know what, I think I can do it on my own. Well, on a breather, Tom sees the opportunity to learn more about Joe's life story. Apparently, Joe had a ton of difficulties, huge amounts of debts because of his previous business and how things got really difficult for him to manage everything. So what did Joe do? He took on multiple side jobs to fulfill the basic needs. He was unshakable in his desire to provide for his two children. What motivates you for all that? Here, these are my two kids. That's, that's Natasha, 14, and that's Hunter. He's nine. nine. And that's how you identify a responsible and dutiful man. As they had an emotional chat, the one thing Tom understood about Joe was that he was a rock. Despite all these challenges, Joe was amazingly motivated and persistent. I mean, just take a look at this guy. So how much work is there here, though? What if there's not a leak tomorrow? Then I'll, I'll hustle. So you run more than one job at a time? Oh, yeah. In this deep moment of empathy and understanding, Tom took the upfront decision of offering Joe a promotion that he deserved. Who wouldn't love to help a person who is so driven and ready to take on challenges, right? And I really like you to spend your time and energy securing work for Belfort in the future. And so I would like to promote you to project manager. Uh, I'm in. I want to advance you $10,000 on your commissions that I know you'll be making as a project manager. It's amazing. I'd like to give you an additional bonus of $10,000 for yourself as well. Wow, isn't it heartwarming to see one human recognizing the worth in another and respect and compensate that person? Sheldon turned out to be a CEO that isn't a psychopath, and Joe turned out to be an employee who was selfless. The perfect combination we were looking for. But in this episode of Undercover Boss, you'll experience the most overwhelming moment. 
So this time, it was time for Joel Manby, the CEO of Hirsch and Family Entertainment, to disguise himself as John Briggs and visit one of his many centers. My name's going to be John Briggs, and I'm going to be a new recruit to our company who is just laid off from the auto industry, documenting what it's like to try out entry-level jobs at Hirsch. But there was one employee who immediately caught his attention, Mercedes. She was a personification of dedication and compassion and captured his heart as the company's most devoted and nurturing employee. Her commitment and genuine care left a lasting impact on John, and this entire encounter was turning out to be quite the thing. So you do this, and you... Uh... Yep, I work in accounting and finance department, I also do events, hosting. Wow, Yeah. you're busy. I do pretty much a little bit of everything here. John was clearly impressed by Mercedes' versatility. Her life story definitely got John emotional, not gonna lie. I mean, this woman was doing everything to bring up her child by working multiple jobs. In a fast-paced world, the idea of finding peace resonates with many, but Mercedes was putting everything she had to make things work. Two years ago before I got this job, right before I got it, me and my son were homeless. You're kidding me. And my son was about one years old. We were staying in his school. It was a private daycare, and we were sleeping on the floor. Regardless of the immense difficulties of parenthood, she remained steady. Even in the midst of these trying times, her willful spirit never faltered. Her positivity and optimism was so inspiring that Joel did not fail to acknowledge her unwavering determination to never give up. He witnessed her relentless commitment as a parent, especially during these challenging times. Her resilience left an unforgettable mark on him, a living proof of strength and unwavering love. I think the more you know, the better. Yeah. The pay comes later, you know? Yeah. The attitude to just do it all on your own like she did, it's just it's so amazing to me. Mercedes being in a bad spot but still came out shining is a proof that with gratitude and a great work ethic, someday or the other, you will definitely reach heights. You know, you just see so much pain and you just think, you know, why does it have to be like this? You know, you want to help, but you can't always help everybody. Man, what an amazing person. What an amazing person. Witnessing Joey's emotional display was greatly moving. It's a rarity to encounter individuals of such high stature who embody both generosity and empathy. The combination of his position and his ability to genuinely connect with others struck a chord deep within, reminding us all of the immense power of compassion and kindness regardless of status. The first thing we want to do is give you an immediate raise. Oh, so God. That, um, because, oh, God. In, in honor of you making that huge move from being homeless into a new apartment, we're going to inventory with you everything that you need. And, and you just tell us what you need. That would be great. I want to see you achieve your dreams, okay? Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. But hold on. It gets better. Knowing what Joey did to help Mercedes get out of the bad spot left me amazed. Mercedes gave such an important message to never give up and always take control of your life, no matter how many lemons life throws at you. But this next CEO, the boss of Twin Peaks, Randy Dewitt, decided to go undercover as Eric West to know the inner workings of his company as he was extremely protective of its image. Randy reached the Twin Peaks franchise in Round Rock, Texas, and what happened next will leave you amazed. We want to be the employer of choice to the attractive girls who might want to work in our restaurant, so we've designed their position to eliminate any of the heavy lifting or dirty work. Really impressed with the way Randy cares and thinks about his employees. I mean, who sees that these days, huh? Hello. Hey, what's up, man? Kale, nice to meet you. I'm Eric. I'm a bar back here. What we do is clean, basically. So here's what happened. Eric's day at Twin Peaks started with meeting Kale. And, oh, what a beautiful start to his day. Meeting the most energetic and polite employee of the company. Moving further with their day, Eric got to know it's pretty hard and difficult to work as a bar back. I mean, take a look at this, you guys. Oh, no, in the inside? Oh, yeah. Handles on the outside, then handle inside. Oh, wow, it gets slippery. Eric was literally struggling with the mugs. Anyone could have gotten annoyed by that, but Kale handled him so patiently without even bursting out. I mean, that's the epitome of a cool-headed and poised person right there, man. Also, seeing Eric got me thinking about whether I would have ever gone undercover if I were there at his place. No jokes. Great willpower, Kale. It's extremely hard to work with utmost passion and dedication when you're carrying so much weight and manage to conceal it until someone asks you about it. Kudos. Well, Kale is a guy any business would love to employ. I mean, just listen to this. You gotta treat people right. That's the, that's the only thing you can do. 
And I completely agree with Kale when he said that we gotta treat people right. It was an eye-opening moment. And no, it doesn't end here. Kale is a pile of surprises. It got Eric stunned when Kale told him that he was a student in the animation college across the street. And guess what? Randy decided to help him out. You know, he's a special employee, and I sure want to figure out a way to help him achieve his dream. The end will make you believe in the saying, good things happen to those who hustle once again. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going to need some help designing that pin. I think you're the perfect man for the job, Kale. Thank you. Thank yeah? you. And we're going to pay you for that, too. Whoa. I want our marketing department to know what you're capable of. I knew no one would because we just saw what happened to Eric's goodwill and strong determination. I'm going to make sure you don't have to pay that loan back. All $53,000 of it. And you didn't have... Oh, my God. Ugh. Thank you very much. Randy's one act of kindness brought such a huge impact on Kale. He ultimately found his peace of mind after struggling to make ends meet for so long. But in this next episode of Undercover Boss, the CEO of Dippin' Dot, Scott Fisher, went undercover to see where the stress points were at his company. Scott Fisher disguised himself as Brad and reached Kentucky Kingdom. Today, I'm here at Kentucky Kingdom in Louisville, Kentucky to work with Bailey. It is here where he met Bailey, a 19-year-old girl working as a supervisor of food and beverage. Hi, Bailey. I'm hey, Brad. Brad. Hi, nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. Her attention to detail was truly inspiring. Even noticing when Brad inadvertently wore his badge on the wrong side, she possessed a remarkable understanding of the company's rules and regulations. This unwavering commitment to excellence showcased her dedication, setting her apart as a remarkable individual. What do you think? How do I look? Um, you look great. Okay. Just can you move your badge to that side so you can see Kentucky you Kingdom? Her ability to confidently brief Brad despite it being her first time working with someone older was truly remarkable. It revealed her strong work ethics and unyielding confidence. The way she commanded the situation with poise and professionalism was worth appreciation. Just watch her. When you come back tomorrow, can you just try to take the beard in I can tighter? A little tighter. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's okay. All right. Straighten it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you're good. Okay, now that was something. Hearing Bailey talk about what she liked about Kentucky Kingdom provided a window into her vibrant personality. She radiated as a true people person who was always brimming with enthusiasm. Additionally, her adept handling of the morning meeting reflected her innate leadership qualities. It's evident that she possessed a unique blend of charisma, warmth, and the ability to inspire and guide others. This is Brad. He's going to be new to the team. Hey, guys. This is his first day. He'll just be kind of shadowing me for the day. He won't be on a car by himself yet. You already know where you're going to be placed for the day. Yeah. yeah. Her team was no doubt very lucky to have her as their supervisor. Her exceptional abilities extended far beyond just being a skilled manager and leader. She was also extremely hardworking and committed to her duties. Working undercover not only helped Brad gain a deeper understanding of the inner workings of his business, but also the problems that the customers faced, such as high rates. It was an insightful experience overall. How much is it? Five twenty-five. You are expensive here. Oh, trying to break my bank. Yeah, yeah. A little pricey. Knowing the customer's disappointment in the pricing left Brad disheartened, making room for some positive changes in the near future. Brad then learned about Bailey's family, and I have to say, it's pretty tragic. Bailey lost her brother due to heart failure. It deeply affected her. Imagining her go through all this at such a young age, but still standing strong. Huge respect, man. Watching Brad take interest in her brother's story and asking her to tell more about what happened is a sign that he genuinely has a heart of gold and wanted to help Bailey with whatever he can. Was it just all of a sudden, just out of the blue? He went and watched the Super Bowl with uh, my cousin. He was fine there. And then when he came home, he went to bed and he wouldn't wake up. Oh no. Now that was heartwarming. But what happened next was crazy. So I also wanted to provide you with a luxury vacation um, on my private jet uh, <laughs> to uh, Universal Hollywood for you and your whole family. <sighs> I mean, I'm speechless. Brad's generosity once again left everyone amazed. What he just offered Bailey was the most unexpected and thoughtful gesture. So I wanted to do something um, for your brother. Uh, so I created the Devin Webb Foundation. I'm shaking so bad. And I'm gonna pledge $20,000 to it. And we want you to be the face of the foundation. My mom's gonna freak out. Thank you so much. I don't know what to say. None of us could have ever imagined that he could come up with something like this. People like Scott make this world a better place. 
People like Bailey motivate everyone to have strength and keep faith because no matter what happens, there's light at the end of the tunnel. But now it's time for the president and COO of Roto-Rooter, North America's largest plumbing and drain cleaning company, to disguise himself as a new recruit in this episode of Undercover Boss. For someone who came from a middle-class family and became the president of a company, Rick has definitely worked his way up the corporate ladder. You can either say, hey, it's tough economic times, poor Roto-Rooter, or say, there's never been a, a better time than right now to find out who we really are. Rick's thought process and way to perceive things were simply exceptional. Coming to the sting, Rick reached New Orleans, and once there, he met Henry, one of the best men working for Roto-Rooter in New Orleans. You can see Henry's sincerity towards his work from the very beginning as he had his priorities in line. I want you to meet Hank. How you doing? I'm okay. How Good. You? Meet you. Okay. Hey, I have this customer waiting on me right now. So, okay. uh, we gotta yeah, we got to get going. Okay. okay. All right. Without wasting much of his time, he mentioned that a customer was waiting for him and returned back to work. On the way to the customer's place, Henry shared a few details about himself with Rick and that he worked as pipe superintendent earlier. You haven't seen any rats under there, huh? I don't like rat. <laughs> you don't like rat? I see a rat. Rick certainly was daring to put his hands into something which is not his cup of tea. They're running to the doctor and all the tests and everything. You got tests and stuff like that? Yeah. You got the, I understand. One can clearly make out looking at Henry's face that he was deeply affected when the lady told him about her medical bills and that she couldn't afford to spend $1,200 as repair cost. If someone else would have been there at Henry's place, he would have clearly denied. But it takes courage to take money out of your own pocket to help a complete stranger in need. What a noble person. And that very instance was enough for Rick to realize that all the things he heard from everyone about him were nothing but the truth. At first, I was taken aback by Henry's giving such an extreme discount. But I thought about it and I realized Henry works on commission, so he was taking money out of his own pocket. That feeling of pride was quite evident just by looking at Rick's face. Without even Henry realizing, this act of kindness became the turning point in his life. As the day wore on, Rick realized that Henry was the go-to man for everyone, and he got a number of calls from the other field technicians. Watching Henry being the giver the whole day, Rick was intrigued to learn more about him outside the professional setting. I decided to come along to the basketball practice. I watched Henry give and give and give all day. I want to see Henry outside of this environment. Since we had to work late today, she picked the kids up. And, and so if you didn't bring them, they wouldn't get Right. Some of them wouldn't get here. Exactly. Everyone deserves to have a partner like Pat, being the biggest cheerleader, always encouraging and helping in whatever they can just so you can have a peaceful night's sleep. As for Henry, not only was he good at his technician job at Roto-Rooter, but he was also fully devoted and passionate towards being a coach and training the basketball team kids. Why do you think he does? He, he just loves children. He could work all day on his job, go pick up the children that need a ride, coach. Henry's will to do good was incomparable, and without Pat being on his side, he would have never been able to serve so selflessly. She was his true soulmate. He seems like he likes her, so he you know loves I mean? it. He loves it. I think Rick entered Henry and his wife's life as a guardian to help them and support the work that they truly enjoyed. The company's going to give you a 15 person van to take all those kids to practice. <laughs> and I've got the keys. Oh, man. The gesture of generosity from Rick towards their shared passion, despite it being unrelated to his company, was an example of him being an ideal leader. While gifting a van may not have been a big deal for him, but it definitely meant everything to Henry and Pat. Rick's selflessness touched their souls in ways words failed to convey. And what's more, Henry's promotion to field supervisor, first level manager, and a raise was well deserved. How about a promotion? Gonna make you field supervisor, first level manager and rotor reader. Gonna give you a raise. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. But this episode of Undercover Boss was certainly the most fragile one till now. This time, Shelly Sun, the CEO of Brightstar Care, nation's fastest growing providers of private health care, went undercover as Linda to work alongside her employees. Shelly reached her nursing home in Oakland, Northern California, where she met Arlene, the certified nursing assistant. And I can't tell you how special this episode is going to be. It felt very gratifying to be able to do something for him as simple as combing his hair and blow drying his hair. I mean, it felt good and doing something for him that he might not be able to do for himself. It just melts my heart watching them take care of people so naturally. And of all people, Arlene was so natural. 
Everyone was so comfortable with Arlene, who was truly a delight to watch, but Linda was no less too. Linda wasn't hesitant to work with patients, and I love that. She definitely deserved to be appreciated, the way she blended in all the duties so effortlessly. Arlene's words resonate deeply with me. So what made you decide you want to be a nurse? Oh my gosh, yeah. I'm a single parent. How many children I do you have? I have one daughter, okay. and she's oh, seven, so, so you know, it's kind of hard. CNAs only get paid so much. Arlene's incredible maturity at the age of 24 astonished me, balancing the responsibilities of caring for others while being a single parent to a 17-year-old girl filled me with admiration and awe. Her journey serves as a powerful reminder of the resilience and capacity for love that exists within us all. But then she said something that completely shook Linda up. You know, I felt like I was wasting my time. So I went back to school, like I'd say a week after I gave birth to my daughter. That so must have been so hard. It was. Did she just say that she went back to school a week after she gave birth to her daughter? I have no words to describe her bravery, but there was more. My daughter's dad passed away at 16. He got killed by a drunk driver. The accidents she faced alone had a devastating impact on her. But despite that, she was determined to see it through. But then, there was something amazing in store for her determination and hard work. I have made arrangements so that that territory could be your franchise. 47500 that's my contribution. No way. <laughs> Shelly wanted Arlene's hard work to be rewarded. And what can I say? This employee truly deserved nothing but the best. So, which among these employees do you think was the best? I don't know if this is the business for you. Oh my God. I'm gonna send you home for the day. You might wanna think about whether this is really the right job choice for you. You would, in your Donato's uniform, Yeah. to do something that's illegal. I apologize for that. Well, you know I have to let you go as a delivery driver. Really? What is the last thing you want to put down in your business? Well, definitely a lousy employee. And we know a good counter is to go incognito. Let's see if this tactic will help Eric Casaburi, the CEO of Retro Fitness reel some bad fish in his pot. A little nervous about going on the cover, but I've got this great disguise. I've transformed Barry Ghosh, a down on his luck guy competing on a reality show to win his own gym. So our no good employee in this part is front desk diva Jacqueline, who looks down on every breathing thing. No, we're not exaggerating. The woman was jacking all the people around her from members to fellow employees including her own CEO. Nice girl and she's nice smile. And you think, hey, all is right in the world. And then she opens her mouth and she's like, you know, the bats from hell start flying out. They're literally stupid. They don't know anything. They don't know how to use a machine. So they're over here looking like they're doing the machine. Yeesh, stop dishing yourself like that on camera. This is gonna come back to bite you. She just couldn't hold her tongue for once. Even worse, Jacqueline went on with destroying the company's valuable ingredients and told the newbie to do the same. Further, she told him to ignore all the given instructions and just to follow her commands. Talk about being uptight. Jacqueline's juice bar, because it seems like she's got her own way of doing everything. Fill it to the top, right. don't overflow it, because then you'll make a mess. That's, that's the shit. perfect shape. I noticed that there was like extra in here. Like, what do you, you guys like, make samples out. out of that? You don't offer just, it to the member nope. at all? You just dump it out. If they want it, they can take it, but if not, oh well. There is a cost associated with every ingredient that goes into that shake. Yep, she dumped good shakes, costing her employers money, just because it saved her time. Well, anyway, the duo put on quite a show, and the members could see it all with their own eyes. Not good for the company's reputation, now is it? Do you want to show me how to make a shake, just so I know before I let you go? Sure, if you'd like. Yeah. Dirty peanut. Are we doing it uh, the way it says? No, you're going to do it the way I told you. The way you told me. Okay, so we want two of these from you, right? That's not a full One problem. and a half. Okay, how's that? One more. One more. That's enough ice. Okay, I would normally hit the... Code, okay, well, I'm telling you the way people like it. Okay. Believe it or not, Jacqueline's face told that she was not liking the new guy, as he couldn't keep up with her bossing him around. And their dynamic was just getting messy with every passing minute. Jeez, lady, you might know what you're doing, but you definitely have no idea how this is gonna ruin you. Well, anyway, her obnoxiousness got so out of hand that she threw fits at poor Barry and the people asking for her services in the most conceited way possible. He's condescending. He's not absorbing anything that I'm saying. He listens to me because I know what I'm doing. I know my... How come this isn't punching? You're probably doing it on the wrong side. Oh, that is the reason why. Oh, man. You can only imagine how things got when the disguise came off and the real identity of Eric came out. But instead of telling you, how about we show you? And FYI, she had no remorse for the way she acted. 
So you know where she's headed. So you could possibly say right now, none that is going to be acceptable. You can sit here for 15 minutes and talk about this. I won't, but okay. Don't waste both our time. Okay. It makes no sense that you would treat someone that way. None. Okay. Nader Masade, the shark of buffalo wings and rings, has got hot sauce in his blood. Nonetheless, running a hotshot food chain takes more than just sitting around in your office. Sometimes you have to go undercover to see what is actually costing you your business. We got more coming, don't worry. Uh oh. Dude, I can be like knocking out five or six racks of these and you're just sitting here doing this one. You have to be able to keep up with the pace. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know this video isn't about bosses messing up, but about people getting fired. And we're getting to that guy in this episode, don't you worry. Meet Wes, the guy who got on the nerves of Nader in just the first five seconds. I mean, you gotta be real bad to annoy a guy wearing a blue fuzzy jacket, right? Change into that and I'll meet you back okay. up here, okay? Okay. Pete is dressed like a dork. He's got the scumbag gold chain, the thick nerd glasses, and the shiny bald head. He seems very soft. The kitchen manager went all out boot camp on the new guy and gave a couple of vague instructions to get things running. And we all know how things go from there. From Nader messing up things to Wes bullying his own CEO. Huh, this line sums up the situation pretty right. Oh, give me the. I'm sorry. Here, back up. Okay. I'm taking over. He stands right now. I would never leave Pete in charge of my kitchen. So now we'll sweep up the gigantic mess you made on the floor. So clean, you would have sex on it. On the floor? Oh, yeah. My floor? I would totally have sex on my floor. Yours? I wouldn't touch it. How's that look? Clean? Uh, I see better. You got everywhere, man. Okay. Come on, man. Do you realize how full of yourself you're acting? <laughs> Just cut the guy some slack for a change. Unfortunately, Masade wasn't the only victim, as the head chief treated all of his employees likewise. He cussed them out and made fun of them in the most degrading way possible. Today that I've never heard before. Pete is a little bitch. He's definitely made of vagina. No, you just blew my mind with your last comment. Wes's behavior is definitely a bad representation of my brand. This is not part of the values that I install in the company. Brandon has a vagina. Newsflash, sir, you're the real D-bag in this situation. And just so you know, mobbing and bossing people around doesn't mean running a business. Actual working does. And the CEO of the company was on the same page with us. Nader got so frustrated with the situation that he broke his cover in front of Red and promised her to set things right once and for all. Can I chat with you outside the uh, restaurant for a minute? Uh, yeah. How are you? Oh, <laughs> so Hello, what is going on? Um, I came in here today and I was working with Wes in mm -hmm. the kitchen and is he for real or is he just putting an act on? No, that's him. He has no respect for anybody in that restaurant. He had his heart set on firing the big muscle guy. But first, he had to go back and change himself back into the boss. Let's see how Wes acts when he gets confronted. I have asked Sean and Red to be here today. Put him right here. Please come in. This hostile attitude got him into the verbal with his own fellow employees, and he refused to accept his mistake. When you act this stubborn, things end poorly. Time to call some big shots, I suppose. Maybe Wes will learn from this experience. F-bombs being dropped. It's embarrassing, and I don't care how many times anybody addressed it, it would never get fixed, because he doesn't want to get it fixed. This is all this new is, to me, yeah, and oh, know. it's not new to you. He comes up and threatens them. My employees. Yeah, you do. Well, that's you just to tell me, me point a finger at me like that. Or maybe not. I do know what the Buffalo Wings and Rings culture is, and what value my company holds. Time to call some big shots, I suppose. Maybe Wes will learn from this experience. Or maybe not. Okay, so um, go on then. It's the decision that Sean would like to make. I'm not gonna change me. I am who I am. Sorry, I'm such a scary monster. Jane Grody Abel, chairwoman of Donato's Pizza, is all ready to take orders, make pizzas, and tackle deliveries. Not knowing that things are gonna be much harder for her than the other bosses on the CBS show. Hi, I'm Jane. Nice to meet you. Oh my gosh. I just said, hi, I'm Jane. Not even thinking about it. Do you want to go ahead and check the order and make sure you have everything? Okay, that'll be 80, 83, 21. Kathy's clearly never delivered a pizza in her life. Okay, this boss lady has not had very good people skills and might have almost blown her cover. But Aaron had taken her under his wing and intended to teach well. 
The delivery guys and everyone were charmed, including his boss. We really had it going with the customers and took his services more seriously than any guy I've seen in my life. Appreciate it, Mark. All right, you have a good one. Thanks. I love that Aaron had a really great customer service balance with speed. And I still don't think he suspects a thing about who I really am. Fortunately, we had no clue that he was with the owner of his food joint, which went in the favor of the boss lady. But what this ignorance led to had us in awe, as Aaron here was not all goody two shoes. Watch how he ruined his own job on camera. He is fast, he's nonstop, the perfect delivery driver. Delivering on cameras is fun though. Like I really, I, I have a really good time doing it. He would like encounter some really weird stuff. Like what? A lot of people smoke pot, like invite me to come in for a little bit. And if I'm not very busy and I don't need to be super focused really, then I'll kind of indulge. You do not. <laughs> Boss or no boss, who on earth discloses information like that or even gets into such activities on the job? Man, there goes your earnings down the toilet. But the smart guy was not ashamed at all. He was very confident about his driving skills. Come on, man, that's just illegal. Have you been getting away with it this whole time? I'll take the joint someone offers to him. Are you against that? I am really against it. I'm sorry. Especially, I don't want to disappoint especially you. Especially getting behind a wheel. But it doesn't really affect my abilities. But all wrong things meet their end now and again. And now it was time for Aaron to get his. Because the CEO was not all strawberries. He was putting other people at risk. And she was ready to take down anyone coming in the way of her company's survival. But he put a lot of people at risk. I honestly didn't even want to get back in the car with him. Should you drive back to the store? Mm -hmm. No. Are you under the influence right now? No. Yes. Jeez, what do you think? I was just smoking in the store and then I just went out on the road? Pretty angry with me. Kind of lectured me like a mom. Kathy needs to hit the bong and just chill out for a bit. Oh boy, this identity reveal is brutal. I actually had a heart for Aaron and his happy-go-lucky attitude. But who knows? Maybe the guy is not as easygoing and rather high all the time. Let's get to the conclusive part of the show. You would in your Donato's uniform Yeah. to do something that's illegal. I apologize for that. But you know I have to let you go as a delivery driver. Really? What is the last thing you should do if you want to keep your job? We rant about our bosses, dropping the hate word a couple of times while talking about the customers. And this really ticked the brand officer off, as he was the face of the company. So she did something that was not planned for on this trip. Ronnie, I wanted to reintroduce myself to you. I'm not actually Rachel. My name is Sarah Bidorf, and I'm the chief brand officer of Boston Market. No. And you're on Undercover Boss. <gasps> so there is no restaurant. You guessed it right, send this diva packing. The odd part is that he totally denied the action and acted like he had no idea of why he was being sent home. But Sarah talked to the manager of the restaurant and made sure he knew that Ronnie had gone under his nose. It makes me, you know, it really upsets me. Yep, upsets me too, upsets me too. We gotta do what we gotta do. I hate to see him go, but you know, 